that's clean as hell. That is super clean. I don't know yet if I'm going to put out the Znats video before this or not. But in the Znats video, you hear me crying and whining that following down Paul and his red two-tone Nismo. I fall in love with it. And I really want one. And what's better than a stinking red two-tone Nismo? One that's on force induction. This car is clean. This car is sick. This car is owned by Kevin. What up, Kevin? What's up, Kevin? What's Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm Kivan with an A. Oh, yeah, no, this is fine. It happens a lot. <laughs> but this is very clean. Huh? I bet you that bad. No, that's fine. <laughs> but it's a super beautiful car. And if you leave it up to me, I'm going to yap, yap, yap about it. And we go over talk about this detail, that detail, the other. But you guys didn't come for that. You guys came because you want to hear how the hell this thing sounds. And you clicked on that thumbnail because you saw it mic'd up. So we're going to mic this car up. We're going to listen to how the supercharger whines, how the blow-up sounds, and how the exhaust. I want to ask questions right now, but I can't. Let's go on to the interview part. Let's cue the B-roll, and let's talk about this car. Hey Kevin, that's a clean, beautiful two-tone red Nismo. Beside the obvious what I just said, what is it? Like, what, what, what is it? It's pretty much chassis number 1508. I actually got it new back in 2010. It was actually sitting at a lot just right when the GTR R35 came out. They were trying to get rid of it. Okay, my George has dropped. So you're just a one-owner car. Yeah, it was Holy me. Holy crap. <laughs> what like year is it? 2008. That's a 2008, damn. It's had 700, I think 53, I guess, demo miles. Yeah. So I still have that picture of when we had it, when we, well, when I ended up picking it up, because I didn't know how to drive stick. So of course my dad ended up um, Dude, driving it back. Dude, that's freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of history with this car. Why not a, a lot car? Of history. That's awesome. Jeez, man. All right. So, be, okay. So, hey, Kevin. So what appearance mods have you done to the car? So appearance mods are just pretty much your, your butter setup for a Nismo 350 was the MCR canards by Kobayashi-san in Japan. We have the hood to match with the arrow catches. We ended up having the Fly One fenders on both sides with the paint match with the carbon accents. We left a part of it just exposed carbon. It, it's a must. When you're doing Absolutely. carbon fiber fenders, you have to just do partial paint. It's a must. Exactly. Yes. And then after that, you know, we ended up sourcing a set of the Crafts, Craft Square mirrors. After that, we kind of just left the back stock, just the wiper delete, just to get rid of it because I'm tired of that wiper. But other than that, it looks somewhat still OEM plus, minus the hood and the it mirrors. It starts, and yeah, it starts as a beautiful car, so it is not much needed to done Absolutely. to do, but it's it still is a beautiful car. Absolutely, and the MCR tow hook, of course. But there you go. It's like its nose ring. <laughs> <laughs> what are the wheels and tires? Wheels and tires. I actually switched up a lot three times. Um, this setup is a 18 10 and a half all around te 37 sl black edition 3 okay on i believe it's 275 35 18 tires so oh uh, square square oh square mm -hmm. nice square. what uh so suspension it's actually you'd be very surprised this is on stock nismo suspension really with the exception of as i was you know to go with the history of the car with driving it as the parts wore out that's when i replaced it so um we ended up just upgrading the front sway bar to a Hotchkiss on full stiff and then we ended up doing the SPL I think the sway bar end links and then we actually have the SPL solid lower control arm bushings because those were shot I think around like 40 or so thousand miles okay and that's pretty much it stock stock rear sway bar and just really just the the solid differential um, bushing which actually got replaced like five six years ago back in Arizona when I was tracking it Okay, so the biggest question everybody want to know, they see the teeth smiling at the front of the car. What performance-wise you've done to it? That's a long list, but the most obvious is that Soho intercooler, that Garrett Core intercooler. It's running Soho's V2 air-to-air -air with the, I believe it's their Gucci manifold, you know, that beautiful red manifold yes. that they debuted on a few of their shop builds, but... As far as the other performance mods, this car was previously cammed, contacted JWT out in California who 
kind of interviewed me about the car and it's running a set of offset cams, a C8 RZ2 with JWT adjustable exhaust gears. At that time too, we ended up just refreshing the whole front end of the motor. We did um, springs and retainers, billet oil pump by boundary, water pump, gaskets, everything, just to refresh it for when it got recammed and everything. So on E85, of course. What charger is it? It is a Vortec V3 SI, I believe. Okay. With um, a nine pound pulley. And I think I've seen some fuel injectors, fuel system upgrade in there too? Mm -hmm. it's, it's by CJM, Charles Konarski. He actually does a lot of stuff for the DEs, HRs, and VHRs. So it's running CJ's, I think it's his S1 fuel return system with an injector dynamics 1300 cc's and then we also have a external fuel filter by injector dynamics okay and i think as far as the other part of the fueling the pump is a walbro 450 hardwired to the battery what have you done in the interior interior it's pretty much gutted in the back i kind of wanted to keep the stock like oem feel so i didn't really ditch most of the interior it still has the stock panels stock passenger seat we just added the Recaro SPG bucket with the, I believe it's the Graffiti K harness bar with a set of say belts because they didn't have any Schroes at the time and I wanted red harnesses so say belts was another option because it's always on the Ferrari competition cars and they always look good in red. And then we did the Works Bell Hub with the, sh um, the quick release and that gold cooler work shifter. And as far as the other interior mods, it was just, you know, the double din stuff. They actually, Soho took um, one of their 3D printed cubbies and put a boost gauge in addition to a multi-gauge which has all of the cool stuff like the ethanol content, AFR, oh, nice. mm -hmm. fuel pressure, all that. But other than that, it's pretty much stock minus the two other gauges on the side which is the water temp and oil temp. Okay. So. I do like the Works Bell. Um, too many people do the NRG. Works Bell is a good quality Japan brand. Right. Speaking about Japan, I do like how you just did a single seat. That's very JDM. Yeah. In America, they do a lot. They, when they change seats, they do the two seats a pair. But in Japan, they just they normally just do the driver's seat. So it's, it's a very low, cool JDM touch. Finally, finally, what do you love about the car? I obviously love the, the new power that it has. It, it really livens up the car with the cams. I think before, when I was driving it just on full bolt-on, GTR injectors E85 it was still it was still spinning first and second easy but now it's like it has that extra thrust and the reason why I chose the supercharger was the was the linearity of the power and when the cams come on it just feels NA even when you're driving on the highway and things it just stays out of boost and it behaves like an NA car but then when you start getting into the throttle it still feels NA but you have a lot more thrust so to speak so I mean I mean, honestly, I love the whole car, but definitely the new addition of the supercharger for sure. It, it kind of rekindled the relationship? Absolutely. I mean, it still brought the first, that first joy of being able to drive it even in stock form. Mm -hmm. Like, it's happened in stages, but yeah, it definitely rekindled a lot of old memories when I first got the car. Awesome. All right, guys, well, let's go ahead and um, let's mic this car up. All right, guys, so we're back. We're in the car. We are... Uh, I don't know what the hell's wrong with Siri right there, but I'm grabbing a seatbelt. Let's go ahead and start up. Let's see how it sounds. TCS off, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Nice. Nice. Ready? Yep. So yeah, go there, yeah. come out. Yeah, and take a right by the driver and turn around. Got 
370 axis. Okay. We had AIP yeah, that, that is a very aggressive dip. It is. Right or left? Um, let's go. Let's go left. Left was nice and long. Yes, yeah, so let's go left. If you want, you can wind up your window some. Oh uh, yeah, that's fine. Now this was so. drive the car well since i got it back i've been nailing it to work we rush hour traffic in atlanta so i put <laughs> 1400 miles up to now so. in atlanta rush hour that's that's hard Nighttime. that's hard yeah twin this yeah all the people are like you daily that car i was like well i'm used to it Jeez. but i mean you get used to it like after a while you just don't really notice it's just like second nature right but i guess that's also what I think a lot of cars now are missing is that connection you have with just driving. You know, it's like you can you can drive a, a, a newer car, but it just doesn't feel like this. The it's mechanical, like, the mechanical feedback. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's very muted in newer vehicles. But you know, there's times too you're like, oh, I don't want to deal with traffic. I don't want to deal with all the noise. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes you just want a quiet car or just something to just get you by and then when you have time to get rowdy jump in yeah, and get rowdy yeah so take the right and the left Yes, I you running up to? 
12 and a half. It was supposed to hit 13 pounds with the 9 pound bully, but the ATI man first, he just saw the better. Uh, but for the benefits of the ATI damper, yeah. you know, that it, so it's sort of what they call the invincible enemy with the vibrations. Frank, it's, it's, you know, yes, we all want to hit like the 600 club, but, you know, I think it's just a little safer and a little more it's peace of definitely, mind. Definitely, yeah, so I'm just on the stop block and whatever, I'm stuck in turtles and stuff. Stuck in turtles. The sounds. Now I heard the sounds IRL passing up and down, but we didn't really get a good full throttle pull. So I'm not gonna know yet until I start editing this thing. But it's it's nice. It's pretty slick. I like to congratulate. Like I say, we don't know yet the order of this video, but we congratulate the Mr. Kevin, um, Motul's favorite, and also Nismo's pick, <laughs> Motul's pick and Nismo pick of Znats 22. So congratulations on that. Thank you. But awesome car, man. You built a beautiful car. Right. That pull, the pull, it feels good. It feels strong. It's awesome. I mean, the brakes, like you say, is stock Brembo it's stock. That, Z1 two piece. That's it. It it was, it was crazy how much stop that had. I guess with the grippy tires too. The whole thing, the acceleration, the braking. It was awesome. It was awesome. Put in the comments, guys, what you think. Don't forget, I'm going to put Kevin's information in the comments, too. Hit a like, hit a follow, guys. Anything you want to say? Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thanks for, for watching. Recording. That's perfect. Thanks for watching, guys. And on that note, y'all have a good one. Hit that sub, hit that like. And until next time, y'all have a good one.